Here we are, mechanical energy. We've, we've talked, last class we talked about energy. And there's all kinds of forms of energy, but when we walk into physics land here, we're going to stick with simplify life. We'll deal with mechanical energy, which really is kinetic and poten gravitational potential energy. We're going to ignore springs for now, only because of time. The conservation of energy is a rule, is a law that we can use. Energy is not destroyed or created, it just changes form. So when you see, you know, it looks like even, even, you know, we're generating electricity, we're generating energy there, we're not actually creating energy, we're just transforming it from one form to another, either piled up water in a hydroelectric dam, so we've stored water, or we have to do some mechanical cranking, somebody has to crank something, or we use stored energy that's stored in chemical energy, and we're just transferring it into a different form. So the rule of conservation of energy makes nice for us. We can solve that, especially when we're dealing with just mechanical energy. We can solve all kinds of problems. The, root, the, the equation is just this. Conservation of energy is energy initial equals energy final. Just like with F equals MA, we had to kind of figure out what the sum of all the forces were. We have to figure out what the initial energy state is and what the final energy state is and write down that equation. So instead of writing out 500 different versions of this equation, this is your equation and then just learn to work from that basic principle. Now, if we have an isolated system where we have no external forces acting on it and or we're dealing with non, I mean with conservative forces, gravity. Gravity is a conservative force, which means we can get back what we put into it. If I lift it up, I can get back. Friction is a, is a non-conservative force. So if we're dealing with conservative forces, we can use conservation of energy or it's an isolated system. If we have friction, which is a, a non-conservative force, then we're going to use the change in energy equals work. How much work? And we can deal with that. A lot of times, we're actually going to use the two together. We're going to use as if it, we had no friction, figure out what it did. If no friction was there, this is what it did with friction. How much energy was lost to friction? So you can, the two are actually going to be combined. We'll solve some problems on Monday on that to kind of get everybody up to speed. All right, kinetic and potential energy. They are, this is where we were last time, kinetic energy is one half mv squared, and potential energy is mgy, where y is the distance from, from wherever there are, our act, wherever we put our axis, right? Wherever we start measuring from, y is just measuring up or down, whatever we want. Thing to remember though with this, velocity is squared. So what does that mean? If I'm solving for velocity using kinetic energy, what is it going to give me? Positive or a negative number? Always a positive number. In the past, the previous equations, we were able to work out direction from the equations. Here, this is always going to spit me out a positive number. But you have enough experience now that you can decide what the direction is yourself. So this just spits out the magnitude of the velocity, not the direction. That's the thing to remember using that, that energy is not a vector. Energy is not a vector, therefore we do not need to worry about components. Makes life a little easier for us. Question. Hey, we were at this conceptual problem is where we got to last class at the very end of the class. So just kind of the setup is the hardest part of these problems. So uh, here's my situation. I have a car sitting on the top at rest on the top of a hill. What does that rest mean? Its initial velocity is zero, right? So a car sitting on top of a hill. If it, with a velocity of zero. Tiny push sends it rolling down the hill. 
After it's gone down five meters, it's moving at some speed. Write down the equation for the co using conservation of energy. And what are in, you know, the, the last part of the statement is you have to do this to even write down the equation, which is what is the initial state, what's its final state, and what was the energy transformation that happened. So here's our picture. There's my hill. There's my car at the top. Now, unlike the other problems, we draw one picture here. We actually have to, if we're using conservation of energy, that means energy initial and energy final. We need to, you know, kind of the picture now has both pieces to it. So there's the initial up here, somewhere down the hill. That's the final situation. So what's the energy initial up there? Well, when you're writing down what's initial, you just say, okay, well, that's going to be kinetic-ish kinetic initial plus this potential initial, right? What are they? Well, I know up here V initial equals zero. So the kinetic energy is zero in the beginning. It has no initial velocity, therefore its kinetic energy is zero. That makes life easy for me. So now I'm just left with m, g, I'm going to use h for height, right? That's what the potential energy is. The initial state is potential energy, mgh, where h equals what? <coughs> equals 5, right? Because we're assuming that this is my 0 and I'm up 5 from there. Do I know that I'm at the bottom of the hill? I may be, I may not be, I don't know yet. This problem hasn't given me enough information to know I'm at the bottom of the hill. If I was at the bottom of the hill, it would be fine. But I know I've dropped five meters. So my energy final state, what's there? I have some kinetic energy, right? Do we see why I have kinetic energy? Because it's moving, right? If it's moving, you have kinetic energy. Doesn't matter how fast it's moving. If it is moving, you have kinetic energy. And I may or may not have any potential energy, depending on whether I'm actually at the bottom of the hill or only part way down the hill, right? So write it down, whatever it is. It's my whatever potential energy I have in the final state. Let's say we're only part way down the hill. So I'd write this down. What is this? It's actually actually one half mv final squared plus mgh final, whatever that happens to be. If the hill was 10 meters high, then h final would be 5, right? If, the, if we are at the bottom of the hill, then h final is 0, depending on where you are on the hill. So that's the setup. That's the writing down our knowns and our unknowns and just writing it down. The equation is energy initial equals energy final. Okay, what's my initial state? M, G, H initial, right? What's my final state? It's one half M, V final squared plus M, G, H final. There's my equation. What do I see happen? What makes life easy for me? Easier. M cancels out, right? I don't need to know the mass in this problem, in this problem, because the mass cancels out nicely for me. If you're going to cancel out a variable, let me just emphasize, remember that that variable must be in every part of the equation. If I did not have m over here, for example, then I could not cancel m out. I have to have it in every piece. Now, if h, ha if our h final, if we were at the bottom of the hill, then this just becomes zero and potential equals kinetic. 
If it's not, then it's something else. So we'll solve a few more examples of this. And what was the energy transformation? I went from potential energy and I ended up with kinetic energy and possibly some potential energy left over. 